preaching is clear, concise, convicting, and quality. Hey there, y'all. Welcome to another edition of Revved Up with me, the Reverend D. Ray Montgomery, uh, or some like to call me D. Ray, or I had a fella last week that called me uh, Dre, D like D. Ray altogether. He called me Dre. He's like, yo, Dre. And I was like, hey, yo, or whatever, because I don't, I don't really know what to do with that. But anyway, I like uh, even either being called Pastor or Reverend D. Ray or or just D-Ray is fine. I don't really like being called Dre. This week, our question has to do with music. The question that keeps coming up is, why do we listen to music? Or what's the point of music? Or is music okay? Stuff like that. It's a great question. There's a lot of controversy these days over music and, and the influence that it has. I just want you to know that in all of this, it's it's clearly my understanding of the truth as I see it. But, you know, you're entitled to your opinion too. And even if that opinion is wrong, that's why we live in America. The ignorant can go on being ignorant and nobody can stop them. Uh, this question about music is a tricky one now. In the good book, we see many instances where music was used for a variety of different things. We see Saul use music to kind of calm himself down when he wanted to murder people. We see Nebuchadnezzar use music when he wanted everybody to bow down and worship him. We see Joshua use music right before he was going to knock down the walls of Jericho and go inside and kill everybody. Today, for us, the dangers in music are the same as they've always been. We still today use music to intoxicate, idolicize, and annihilate. You know, sometimes you use music to try and calm yourself down before you go on a murdering spree or whatever. Sometimes we use music when we want to try and get people to look at us. I don't know if you've had an opportunity to watch that Dancing with the Stars, but that Joey Fatoni from... Uh was he in the O-Town or I think he's in the NSYNC? That Joey Fatoni can dance, you know, and sometimes when I watch him with his dancing and his gyration, I think, man, I could see how it would be very easy for Joey Fatoni to move into the place that only God should occupy in my life. So, you know, where Nebuchadnezzar is trying to get people to worship him by playing music. I think Joey Fatoni is on that same path. We also see music used, you know, they're using Metallica down there in the uh, Abu Ghraib prison, and they do that and they torture victims with it. So music, plain and simple, is just evil in every way. We've seen classically through history that music is used for for rebellion, like in the 60s. Sometimes we see music lead to suicide, as in the case of, you know, the, the guy from the Nirvana. What was that guy's name? Uh, Kurt Cobain, we see him. They didn't say this in the news, but I suspect that he was probably listening to his own music when he decided to end his life. If you've heard any of those Nirvana songs, they kind of make you want to do that. He'd have been much better off if he'd have been listening to somebody else's record. Or maybe he was, I don't know. And if you think about who he's married to, too, I mean, that there's not a lot to live for there. She's better now, because she's an actress now. Uh, Courtney Love, she's really come a long way. I think. And I know she was working on a new record with the guy from Smashing Pumpkins. Ronnie, you didn't know I knew all this stuff, did you? It's true. I know a lot about uh, about music. But anyway, it's terrible. Music is terrible. We see music lead to dancing, sometimes nasty dancing, which is not okay, That, as in the case of Justin Timberlake or uh, Nelly Furtado. I think sometimes we see music lead to devil worship, as in the case of ACDC or Blue Oyster Cult. They are devil worshipers. And you can, they don't actually say that, but you can just kind of tell. You get that one of them has one of those kind of pencil-y mustaches that curls up a little bit in the end. That's what devil worshipers always look like. If the question is, why do we listen to music? You know, the answer to that is that music feeds the monster inside of us. It makes us dance faster. It makes us more angry. It makes us drive in a different kind of way than we would otherwise. It basically feeds all of the evil inside man. That's what music has always been used to do. The better question is not necessarily, why do we listen to music? But rather, how do I stop? And I think that's really the question that I would want to pose to you all who are watching. Them. How do you stop listening to music? And I know, how can I go from love loving music as much as I do to, to a place where I wouldn't listen to any music at all. And let me explain it to you in a couple of stages. The first stage, just listening only to Christian music. It's difficult to transition because the lyrics are ridiculous and the musicianship is poor. The recording quality is unsatisfactory. Pretty much in every way, you're, you're going to immediately be disappointed by Christian music. It's, it's quite terrible. And I know that people say, well, I can still dance to Christian music and I can still rebel to Christian music and I might still want to commit suicide. All those things are true. In fact, it seems to me that the, the chances of your wanting to end your own life may actually increase significantly once you've been listening to only Christian music. I know you can dance. And I know you can rebel. What I'm saying is that Christian music will crush your spirit. Once you hear the Christian music, you're probably not going to feel like dancing. And ultimately, it's going to lead you into the second stage. You're going to start to feel so discouraged. You say to yourself, well, if I had to choose between Christian music or total silence and isolation from music altogether, I would take total silence and isolation. And that's exactly where you want to be, young people. You want to punish yourself just to get you the spot where you don't want music at all. You get to a place where you're like I am and you pretty much hate music. It's a very safe place to be because then you don't find yourself turning to music as a vice or a weapon of destruction or a tool for rebellion or any of those other things. I think it makes a lot of sense that way. So thanks very much for paying attention. This has been Revved Up with me, D-Ray uh, Montgomery. Bye-bye.